Some breaking news to report to you right now. The New York Times is reporting that New York Governor Andrew Cuomo, uh, his office overruled health officials multiple times to keep nursing home deaths a secret. That death toll, he wanted to keep that secret. For multiple months he did that, and apparently this was happening at the same time that he was pitching and then writing his book on leadership during the pandemic, Bob. So he was keeping it uh, from state lawmakers, mm -hmm. kept it out of interviews, kept it out of various documents. Um, so it makes you wonder why was he trying to hide that information and uh, one answer right. could be related to his great leadership that he was mm -hmm. trying to sell uh, the book. I don't know how many millions he made on the book right. uh, but supposedly that's what it was based on his great leadership and obviously since then we've learned that the leadership is highly in question yeah. <laughs> and then this uh, we're going to later in the hour talk to an attorney about uh, what kind of legal exposure mm -hmm. is there to that when you are keeping that information right i think that there could be some legal um exposure because this also was at the same time that there were multiple investigations going on launched by the doj of the trump administration into some of these states new york being one of several and what was happening in nursing homes in those states all so right we'll ask about that okay. coming up a little bit later also but, yeah. Go ahead. Also here in New York City, uh, the New York City Council uh, passed seven new police reform measures. One ends qualified immunity for police. It's all part of the city's plan to hold police accountable and reimagine public safety. But the plan sounds very familiar. Listen to this. Commit to the hard, long-term work of reimagining policing. Reform and reinvent their public safety department. Reimagine how we are accomplishing public safety. Reimagine public safety. Reimagine policing. Reimagine what public safety looks like. Reimagine what public safety looks like. Reimagine what public safety looks like in this country. Reimagining policing in our communities. You can support public safety and reimagine it at the same time. Oh, that, that talking point, uh, reimagining policing. It's like so, when they had the anchors yeah. saying the same thing exactly. all over the country. Some talking points went out from somewhere. So how is that working out in the Big Apple? Not too good. The New York City Police Department reports a surge in shooting incidents, up more than 76% from the same time last year. And more than 5,300 New York City um, officers, law enforcement, either retiring or they filed for retirement in 2020. That's a 75% spike from 2019. Joining us now to discuss is former Republican Congressman from New York, Peter King. So we have a lot that we could talk with you about today. Uh, but let's begin with this surge in violence here in New York City. And what do you think is behind it? I think this whole move by the progressives, by the liberals to reimagine the police is absolutely disgraceful. It's based on a false narrative. And unfortunately, the police have to deal in a real world, not the imaginary world. And no one has done more to say black lives are all lives than the police. In New York alone, the NYPD reduced the murder rate by over almost 90 percent, and almost all of that came from the African-American community. So in recent years, the NYPD has probably saved 10,000 black lives, in addition to other lives. Mm. And uh, nationwide, there's no evidence at all of any inherent racism. Uh, in fact, every year more uh, whites than blacks are killed by cops. And that's both in total numbers and also in proportion to the number of crimes committed. So the, the police officers, and I have a bit of a bias here. My father was NYPD for over 30 years. I know what they go through. I know what they've achieved. And to be attacked like this and to be there's all these terms about we have to reform the police. We have to improve the police. Listen, the cops are always reforming themselves, but no one is doing a better job than they are. You know, this is a problem, so people don't think we're being parochial here. This is a problem throughout the country. There are a number of cities. I mean, you could take Portland. Yeah. You could take Los Angeles. There are a number of cities that have seen Chicago. spikes. Go ahead. Right, and also Chicago. I mean, it's all—I I, I was addressing New York. But, no, you're right. It applies all over the country. Murder rates are up. Crime rate is up. Violent crime is up. And in almost all those instances, the overwhelming majority of victims are African Americans who are killed by other African Americans. And which means there are issues we have to address in the inner cities and in certain communities. And it should be done as far as education, as far as health care, as far as housing. But that's not the cop's job. The cop's job is to protect innocent lives and to get bad guys off the streets. And when they try to do it, they'll take one case and blow it out of all proportion. And it's uh, it's just terrible. I mean, that would be like uh, 
saying we have to defund or reform doctors because anytime there's malpractice in a hospital or disbar all lawyers, anytime you have a, a crooked lawyer, the overwhelming majority of cops do an outstanding job. Yeah, they certainly do. I mean, but there's this overwhelming, not only are they talking about defunding police departments, I'm struck by just this lack of respect of uh, these folks that are out on the street now that, that think that they don't even need to listen to what a law enforcement officer says. You know, does this come from the family unit? I mean, do we need to do something about just teaching respect for law enforcement? Yeah, well, you know, almost 60 years ago now, uh, Daniel Patrick Boynihan, when he was working in the uh, Kennedy administration, wrote a paper on the uh, inner city and the uh, breakdown of the African-American family uh, unit. And there's any number of reasons for that. But rather than address that issue, Moynihan was attacked as being a racist. And that's what we have to do today. We have to show that there, there are problems in the community, and these are good people. And there's other uh, situations that have caused that, the housing, the health care, and go through any number of issues. And but the families have to come together. It's really in the in the in the end, it has to be up to them to teach the kids to respect the cops, not to tell them that the cops are out to kill them, to out to shoot them. As I said before, there are more whites than blacks killed every year. And I, I grew up in a neighborhood where there were some gangs at the time. My father was a cop, and he always said, "Stay away from those guys because when the cops come, they are going to arrest people who are in there, or you could be arrested. Stay away from trouble." And listen, under the uh, uh, Giuliani administration, under the uh, Bloomberg administration. Crime is reduced in those communities by, again, 85 to 90 percent. And so that made it easier for African-American families to get together. And up until just, I guess, last year, really, uh, in, in those communities, the police were highly rated. Ray Kelly, when he was commissioner of New York, when he left, he had a, seven, a, a almost three to one favorable rating among African-Americans. Today, you mentioned the cops and the numbers are down. Well, happens the media effort, the media drive, the false media uh, uh, shameless leaders like yeah. Al Sharpton and others, and it's caused this all, and it's, it's terrible. It's really, it's hurting the cops, and mostly it's hurting the people in those communities. What yeah. needs to be done to go back to the era where Giuliani and Bloomberg had control of this uh, city, and when we talk about this, this can be applied to other cities as well. Yeah. What should be done? Basically, we have to go back to what we were doing, and that's to allow the police to do their job. And to, listen, if any cop acts out of order, obviously it's up to the police and, if necessary, the district attorneys to, you know, to uh, prosecute them. But basically it's to change this whole narrative. I mean, there's no magic wand here. Giuliani did it block by block, the NYPD. Uh, and and uh, that was under Bill Bratton. And then Ray Kelly during uh, Mike Bloomberg's administration. They went into the communities. They were active. They were aggressive. They were preemptive. They got guns off the street. And you, but so long as people are saying that the cops are the bad guys, the cops are the villains, that the cops, as Joe Biden is saying, are somehow in, inherently racist, uh, Kamala Harris saying this is terrible. So we have to, uh, it's up to people in public life mm -hmm. to restore the dignity of the police and also to take the handcuffs off the cops. And if the cops do something wrong, that's one thing. But almost all these cases we've seen now with the Chauvin in Minnesota, he was prosecuted, you have police testify against yeah. him. And you, he's going to jail. Con but in other cases, police are getting, like, for instance, in Ohio, that cop who did the right job by saving one girl's mm -hmm. life is being blamed because he had to kill another uh, person to save an innocent person's life. Yeah. Before we run out of time, I do want to get your reaction to this that's just happened here in New York City. And since you brought up the Chauvin trial, this was a reaction from a podcaster here in New York City uh -huh. to that. Uh, you know what I'm talking about. Um, yes. Listen to this. And until then, the police. Okay, that, that was just a very uh, short part of it, but basically she was saying that she wanted to go out and run down uh, a police officer after doing shots there on camera on her podcast. And right after that, she did just that, hitting and killing a police officer with her car, and she now faces 13 charges and 15 years in jail. Yeah, he's from Long Island, the poor officer and his family. Uh, he lives probably within 20 miles of my home here in Long Island. Uh, he was an outstanding cop, 14 years uh, a veteran. He was on the Long Island Expressway diverting traffic away from another fatal accident where this woman who was intoxicated and uh, drugs r ran him over with the car, just ran into him and took off. And this was after she had done a podcast with a racist rant about how she hated cops. But now, that should be a lead story on the evening news. You would mm -hmm. think that, you know, Lester Holt and others, <clears throat> Gail King and all these uh, people are out there who are so concerned about innocent lives. How about the innocent life of that cop who was mowed down as he's saving another person's life 
and trying to rescue people from an automobile. He gets he gets run over. It wasn't sideswiped. Dragged, we ran into him, ran him over, and kept going. Yeah. And she had just finished a racist rant. Uh, Peter, wanted to get your response uh, to reports coming out that uh, Governor mm -hmm. Cuomo's office had tried to keep from the public and from other uh, areas of the government the actual death toll uh, and their association with people who had been sent essentially to their deaths in some uh, senior facilities, um, that the senior aides there engaged in a sustained effort to prevent the state's own health officials from knowing about some of this information. What's your response to what you've seen so far? This just adds to the evidence that we've been here. It's been trickling out uh, over the last several months about how the Cuomo administration was uh, deliberately concealing numbers. And this involves uh, human life because those numbers could be used also to determine what policies are working and what weren't. And also, at the same time he's doing this, he was trying to sell his book. And uh, this could raise serious legal issues because uh, you're taking governmental action to uh, obscure or hide uh, uh, numbers that were important to other branches of government, the federal government, the state health department itself, the state legislature. Be intentionally withholding those numbers at a time when you're trying to sell a book and you're trying to somehow build a reputation for yourself, and it comes at the expense of human life. That this can be very serious. If these allegations are true, uh, then again, it just adds to previous allegations and it's accumulation of evidence, which can be very damaging to the governor. Right. Well, it's what Melissa DeRosa, his um, top aide, yeah. admitted to uh, months and months and months ago. So now maybe they will believe her. Um, all right. Well, Peter King, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Right. Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe too. hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.